Thank you, Chair, and I uh, move the motion. <coughs> Minister, in 10 days' time, uh, the emergency ban on no-fault evictions will come to an end, a decision of you and your Cabinet colleagues. And we know <coughs> from the Residential Tenancies Board figures released recently that a very, very large number of families, of single people, of couples, of families with children and pensioners, will have notices to quit uh, that will fall due from April. Now, of course, some of these people will find alternative emergency accommodation or alternative private rental accommodation, uh, albeit difficult as it is. But many of these people, <coughs> excuse me, will be forced to move in with family uh, and friends. And in fact, in some cases, people will be forced to emigrate uh, because they will be unable to seek alternative accommodation. But a very large number of the men, women and children with eviction notices will seek emergency accommodation. Uh, we know that from what has been happening in recent years. Uh, and according to the local authorities that we're speaking to on a regular basis, they are almost at capacity. In fact, some local authorities have no emergency accommodation available uh, tonight. And that means where people present to their local authorities in April and then in May and then in June, and no emergency accommodation is available, they will be forced to sleep rough, or if the TUSLA guidance from 2018 continues in force, families with children will be referred to Garda stations for a safe place to sleep. Uh, we're going to see levels of homelessness, Minister, that nobody ever thought uh, was possible. And I have to say, Minister, you are responsible. You and your Cabinet colleagues have made this decision. But more importantly, the reason why we're in this crisis is because you failed to deliver an adequate supply of social and affordable homes since taking office. Uh, not only are your targets too low, but year after year you've missed them. Uh, you've also failed to respond to what has been a shrinking private rental sector over six or seven years, something that was happening <coughs> when you were in opposition, you spoke loudly about, and you have done nothing about since becoming Minister. But the worst decision of all is the decision to end the ban uh, on evictions. And last October, I wrote to you, I set out in some detail measures you could and should have taken. Uh, I wrote to you again two weeks ago, repeating many of those measures. <clears throat> and on both occasions, not only did you ignore the advice that came from opposition, but you ignored the advice that came from NGOs, from homeless service providers in the public sector, and other uh, opinion uh, makers. And as a consequence, we are going to have a government decision that willingly, consciously and knowingly will lead to ever-increasing levels of homelessness. In fact, <clears throat> in the exceptionally long-winded and appallingly superficial uh, alternative motion that you have tabled today, you admit in black and white that your decision is going to see emergency or homelessness increase because of a lack of emergency accommodation. And the reason why is because you didn't use the breathing space of the last ban on evictions uh, 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 to reduce the flow of people into homelessness. You didn't take our advice in terms of emergency planning and procurement powers uh, to target de derelicts, vacants and new building technologies to increase social housing supply over and above your own targets. In fact, you didn't even meet uh, those targets. And because of all of those failures and because of your decision, there are people who tonight simply do not know where they're going to go in April, in May uh, and June. And probably the most telling thing in the debate that we've had in the last two weeks is when you and your colleagues are asked over and over again a very simple question. What is your advice to those people, families, uh, singles, uh, children, who when they present to the local authority and that local authority has no emergency accommodation, where do they go? You still haven't answered that. Uh, and worse than that, uh, your hastily cobbled together uh, a set of proposals launched two weeks ago, uh, and now, uh, again, even more hastily cobbled together and less convincing uh, set of propositions here, will do nothing for those people. Nothing at all this side of the autumn, and for many, nothing into the winter. So I have to say, the idea that you think your housing plan is working, the idea that you think this is a credible response to the highest levels of homelessness in modern history in this state is an absolute disgrace. You and your colleagues should be ashamed of yourself because as those homeless numbers start to rise come April, it is your responsibility and those of the colleagues around you. So, I have no hesitation in urging government to reverse the decision 
to extend the emergency ban on evictions and crucially put in place the emergency measures we have been screaming for you to do uh, for uh, almost a year. Because if you fail to do that, you will be responsible for increasing levels of homelessness in the time ahead.